So we're going to look at um, laws of logs. So we have a huge list on this side. So there's quite a few things. In fact, it becomes difficult to memorize because there's so many of them. Um, and some of them are kind of like um, versions of one another. But we are going to attempt a question and then we're going to see which ones we can use. And it might be possible that we're going to use more than one to go through it. So we have a question here that says log of base three with the argument. So sometimes it's difficult to realize or when we're reading it, what applies to what. So a log is actually like a function. So if you remember, you had your like function notation, they write something like this. This is a function. We are essentially putting this into the argument of the function. And inside of log, there is a series of um, operations that happen and then it carries out uh, something for us. Now, we would use a calculator to deal with something like that. And also our argument has a bunch of variables. So our calculator probably doesn't get it right away. We're gonna try to simplify this a little. So we're gonna take a look on the left-hand side here. And it looks like I got a log on one side, nothing on the other. So it gets a bit tricky. Um, I need to figure out a way of getting rid of the log. And there's a nice opposite operation here. And if I go down, you can see it here. It says log A of argument A to the power of R is just R. Okay. So what that's saying here is that we can raise something to a log and we can essentially cancel another piece out. Um, the reverse also works. And actually, now that I look at it, it's not in here. But maybe we can use, um, are you familiar with this idea where we have A is equal to B? x we have an exponent and then the equivalent of a log would be log b of a is equal to x so these two things are equivalent expressions so this is when we're in our exponential form and let's see if this will be light enough oh that's good this is when we're in our logarithmic form and we can go back and forth between these okay one can turn from one to the other so if we kind of look at this rule here I'm going to write this rule out with our letters. It says here, log of base A, argument A to the power of R is equal to just R. Okay, I'm going to see if I can maybe turn that into an exponent. And maybe we can make sense of it using some of our exponential rules. Okay, so uh, this here would be the base of something. So I'm going to put that in the base over here. That's where our base was of an exponent before. Okay, um, the argument happen to be on the other side. That's where their place of our A was. So I'll write that in black. So here it says A equals A. This is a little easier maybe to understand. So we've done this, we've done the base, we've done the argument, and then the exponent here, it turns out, actually lives on top of this base. So we have this exponent here. Well, if what that's saying here is A to the power of X is equal to A to the power of whatever this something is. Okay, well, when looking at this, because the bases are the same, this unknown must be whatever x is. So the unknown must be x, and hence what it's saying is we can get rid of all the bottom and just work with our um, exponent here. Okay, with that being said, can we do the reverse? So in this one, we had a base of a power. This was essentially a power here. Okay, we're going to see if we can do the opposite. Can I say this argument? Can I say that um, a to the power of log base a x is that equal to, we'll say m, okay? So it's currently an exponential function. This is actually an exponent right now. And we're gonna try to turn it into a log base. Um, so because this is the exponent, this is our base. So we're gonna say equivalent expression log, and this is our base. Okay, just like B was our base here. So it's going to go down here. Our argument, if you remember, A is what it's equal to on the other side. So we have M is equal to. And then the exponent, that's this whole thing over here, is this side. So essentially what we're doing is like a proof of a law. So you don't have to memorize this process. Just maybe the outcome at the end will be helpful. And it says log base A of X. Ah, when I take a look at these, this is log of some base, argument N is equal to log of some base argument x. All that's telling me is that m must be equal to x, okay? So I can simplify this piece by saying m equals x. And what that means for all this information over here is if we have a base exponent with a base log, they essentially cancel out and this x can be just left over. 
say we have the x equals n. A lot of explanation and going back and forth. The key piece here is we can reverse this law here. This law says that if I have a log a of some argument in the exponent, I can drop off all the bottom and be just left with the exponent. The same goes for if we have an exponent. If we have an exponent of the log base a, whatever the argument is, we'll just say it's the letter r, I can drop off all this part and we can just be stuck with the r. So that's a key piece that we got to know. So even though it wasn't on there, we kind of went through a proof. Now <laughs> let's go over, because the original thing we wanted to do is how the heck can we deal with this question? Log base three n squared minus two n minus six equals two. Okay. Our problem is we have a log. It could be base three, base 10, the base doesn't really matter. I kind of want to get rid of it. And in mathematics, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So uh, we commonly will multiply both sides by two, subtract by one, divide by five, all of that. And we always do it to both sides of the equation. What we haven't really encountered yet is raising everything to a base. I can technically take any number. Let's say I had um, x is equal to 5. I could raise both of them to the base 2. So this says 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 5. x is still equal to 5. This is true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this fact to my advantage to get rid of the log. I know that if I raise this to base 3, so if I say 3 and I make all of this a power, this becomes log 3 and then all of this in the argument according to the last law we used. Okay. And what, if I raise this side to 3, I have to raise this to base 3 too. So that 2 becomes an exponent. What this means is this log base 3, this can cancel out, and I'm just left with the argument. Now, I can't change anything over here, but what's nice is I get n squared minus 2n minus 6 is equal to 3 squared. This is way more tractable. I can deal with this. So just recognizing that we can use this rule to get rid of a log. If I bring everything to that base, I can cancel my logs out and just leave what's left in the argument. I just got to remember to do it to both sides of the equation. Um, from here is some quadratic stuff. Well, we'll quickly talk about it, but the logs were the, the main thing we wanted to know about. Um, if we're trying to solve for n, we need to set it equal to zero. So I'm gonna give that an actual value. Three squared is nine, okay? But I need to set this equal to zero so that I can either use quadratic formula or factoring or something like that. So I'm gonna move nine over, n squared minus two n minus six minus nine equals zero. We'll simplify our like terms, n squared minus two n minus 15 equals zero. And I could probably use product in sum here. In fact, this is one. Two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative two. Oh, here we go, negative five and three work out really nice. So very quickly, because this is a power of one, I actually don't have, or sorry, a coefficient of one, I don't have to decompose. I can actually just very quickly put this in two set of brackets. One of them, they both have an x as the first term, and then negative five is one of the second terms. Oh my gosh, that's not a five. <laughs> and positive three is the other. And then from here, hopefully it's familiar. You've done a lot of this already. We split the two because we're trying to find a zero. x minus five equals zero, which means x is five. And x plus three equals zero, so x is minus three. Um, so we did some quadratics at the end, but really the key part here is, holy, we did a lot, eh? Mm -hmm. Let's see now one more time. There it is. Um, it's those log rules. And we had to prove one of them. But remember, you can raise something to a base to get rid of a log. That's going to be a key piece of this.